Well, things are a little different in the background and stuff uh, when you see the recording today. They'll be green because it's the season of Epiphany. Epiphany is uh, when we talk about how God is revealed to us in many ways, revealed in the Word, revealed in, in uh, um, the sacrament, revealed in the community we share, revealed. Sometimes it's hard to see uh, the presence of Christ in our lives, especially hard when people are locked up just maybe by themselves because of COVID, whatever, but the promise of the gospel is that God is there. So we're hoping, and we're hoping that through this video worship, um, that you see, that you see um, God more clearly in your life. You get a glimpse of the goodness and grace of God. If, if, if you get but a glimpse, well, then we've, we've done a good job with the help of the Holy Spirit. So may this bring that to you. Let us worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected We've rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those who you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, 
and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Lord God, source of every blessing, you showed forth your glory and led many to faith by the works of your Son, who brought gladness and salvation to his people. Transform us by the spirit of his love that we may find our life together in him, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Hello, children. In a few minutes, we're going to hear a story from the Bible about when Jesus and his mother and the disciples all went to a wedding. Have you ever been to a wedding? Well, or a wedding reception. Um, there's usually some sort of a party and a celebration to celebrate that the people that are getting married are in love and that they're going to be together forever. And sometimes they have something like wine or some other fancy drink and there'll be a toast. And um, have you ever done that? Where like you take a glass and you say cheers and you clink it with all the other people around you? Well, that's a toast. And so at this wedding, they ran out of wine and they didn't know what they were gonna do. And so Jesus wanted to help out and Jesus turned water into wine. And so this pot is the biggest pot that I could find in our church kitchen. And it holds about 40 quarts of water. So it would take about 20 of these pots to be the same amount of wine that that they had after Jesus turned the water into wine. That is a lot. Think about how much that is. That is a lot of wine, 20 of these. And not only that, the wine was delicious. It wasn't cheap, yucky wine that, that Jesus made out of water. It was delicious wine. It was the best that anyone had ever tasted. And that's just what Jesus is like. Jesus has the biggest and the best love for all of us and for everyone. And Jesus wants us to live that kind of love and share that love with others. So this week, let's see if we can do that. Share Jesus's big, wonderful, best love with everyone around us. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. The first reading from Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication sh shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called, my delight is in her and your land married. For the Lord delights in you and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall God rejoice over you. The word of the Lord. The second reading from 1 Corinthians. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are a variety of services, but the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith 
by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each individually, just as the spirit chooses. The word of the Lord. Manifest at Jordan Stream, prophet, priest, and king supreme, and at Cana wedding guest, in thy Godhead manifest, manifest in power divine, changing water into wine, anthems be to thee addressed, God in flesh made manifest. The Holy Gospel according to John. Well, on the third day, there was a wedding in Cana at Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour is not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, to the servants, fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it out. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine, it did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Okay, let's be honest, let's be honest, let's be honest with yourself. How many of you have seen the movie Wedding Crashers. And then to be even more honest, if you're honest, how many of you kind of really liked it and thought it was pretty funny, even though there's parts of it, the whole premise about these two guys who aren't so good would crash weddings all in the effort to meet and woo and uh, romance women. And he, they would go and take on fake identities and do it. And of course, what happens is love intercedes and unexpectedly when one meets the woman of his dreams at the wedding, suddenly things are different. Wedding crashers. Now, the gospel does not say this in any way. It's just a fun little speculation, but you wonder about the wine going out of that wedding because that was a real faux pas. You just did not run out of wine at a wedding in those days. That was a, your honor would have been uh, ruined. And so the idea of running out of wine. So some people, I read one commentary like said, to imagine or wonder if Jesus and his disciples were wedding crashers. Now, I don't go with that as much because Jesus' mother is there. So Jesus' mother, maybe it's a family they knew or whatever. But maybe, maybe the 12 disciples tagged along and maybe they were wedding crashers and maybe they helped deplete the wine supply. As I said, being out of the wine was a great disgrace for sure in that culture. But instead of ruining the party, whether or not they were crashers, and part of the cause of running out of wine was them, instead of ruining the party, in the end run, Jesus is the life of the party. He provides that which enables the wedding feast to go on. It is interesting that this story is told only in the Gospel of John, why others leave out this first miracle? No, no one knows. We do know that it was well known by all who heard this story, everyone who heard this story, by the one who wrote it down, by, by those who recalled it, the importance of the image of a wedding banquet. 
a feast of joy. How important that image was in the holy writings of Israel. In the image of prophets and elsewhere, the image of a wedding was, was used uh, by Jesus in numerous parables because of how important it was. The image of a wedding is an image that, that resonates with the promises of God to bring joy to a community, to bring families together in love, to, to bring the community of God's people together under, under one tent, if you will, with one caterer, namely God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Ishmael, Jacob, and Esau, and all the children of God that follow. The image of the wedding banquet is used frequently in Scripture as a, a picture of the restoration of Israel. And wine is frequently used as a symbol of joy and celebration associated with salvation. Amos, the prophet, speaks of the day when, quote, the mountains shall drip sweet wine and all the hills shall flow with it. Isaiah speaks of the feast that God prepares for all peoples, a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of well-aged wine strained clear. The abundance of wine is a symbol of the abundance of joy that awaits not only Israel, but all peoples on the day of God's atonement and salvation. So Jesus' is extravagant miracle of changing the water to wine is a sign that in him, in him, life, joy, and salvation have arrived. At the beginning of John's gospel here, at this story, the narrator told us that in him was life, and that life was the light of all people. And later in the gospel, Jesus will tell us, I have come that they might have life and have it abundantly. Abundant life is more than mere existence or survival and certainly more than abundance of material things. Abundant life is to know and be known by the one through whom all life came into being. It is to have an intimate relationship with the one who loves us so much that he doesn't know how to stop giving. It is a kind of life that is depicted by the abundance of fine wine in this story, overflowing with more than they need. Of course, abundant life never means for us a life of ease, of, of comfort, of luxury, or an absence of sorrow or suffering. But it does mean that in Jesus we have abundant, extravagant source of grace to sustain us. Grace that is more than sufficient to provide us where we fall short and give us joy even amid sorrow and amid struggle. Abundant life means that in Christ we are joined to the source of true life. Life that is rich and full and eternal. Life that, that neither sorrow nor suffering nor death itself can destroy. So when Jesus restores this wedding, while it may have not dawned on them at that very moment, looking back, looking back, those who remembered and certainly those who read about it or listened to the story years later would understand more fully that this is a sign. A sign, a sign not just that Jesus has authority and abilities that point him out, that point to him as one to be followed and believed and listened to, but also that in him God is at work to bring joy to fullness to come to be the life of the party, to be the one who brings life to the party. I mean, this week, as, as in most weeks, I have had the joy of uh, the opportunity, and yes, the duty, to visit with those for whom life has become more difficult. We talked about the fact that, as the Gospel of John will say, Christ has come so that we might have abundant life in him, that all might know abundance of God. Now, these people who believe this, who have heard this, well, it's kind of harder to see right now in their lives. So we talked about how abundant life today at their age, whatever age, in whatever circumstances, might be different than abundant life looked like years ago when they were younger, when things were different. Maybe for some of us, what we thought made for abundant life back in our younger days, we now know really wasn't the abundant life God wanted for us. We were at a party, but maybe it wasn't the wedding that where God was. So yes, another way to put it is certainly there are times in our lives when it feels like the wine has run out. The party is over. Whether we are the host or the hostess or the guest, what can we do? Maybe like this wedding, there have been good times. The party 
has lasted a while, but now, now because there are wedding crashers or someone didn't do what they were asked or poor planning or whatever the reason, the wine has dried up. Maybe the first thing we can do is what Jesus, what Jesus' mother tells the servants. Listen to him. Listen to the voice. Let Jesus direct our deeds and our thoughts and our actions. He might challenge us. He, he might surprise us. Jars that are supposed to hold water, suddenly they hold wine. And we come to worship. You come to worship, I hope, or listen to worship in part because you long to listen to him. And you believe that, yes, in the meal we share, we literally do drink of the wine of new life. That in him, through him, we do have joy restored. In the meal, we are meant to see that Christ has come to restore community, enliven community, in grace. To listen to his promise that even in the midst of, of difficult times, dry times, God is present to bring wholeness. One of the things worth noting, by the way, is that Jesus doesn't give them enough wine just to get by. Rather, he gives them way more wine than they need. One jug probably would have been enough, but six with 30 gallons each? Really? And on top of all that, this wine is the good wine, the better wine, saved until this moment. Not only is the wedding party restored, it's better, it's enhanced. Sometimes it may not feel that way. Sometimes maybe we feel as if God's blessings have actually diminished in our lives. But, but have they? The true blessings? Does the true blessing of God's grace and mercy and love ever run dry? Jesus gives wine abundantly. God pours out grace upon grace. God supplies all the grace needed for this community and then some. There is so much wine they could go out and invite others and get others to really crash the party. Listen to him. He is, after all, the true life of the party. Amen. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. By your Spirit, activate within your church gifts of faith, healing, and prophecy. Unite those who profess your name across congregations, denominations, and geographic boundaries. Open our hearts to recognize and celebrate surprising miracles. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your creation reflects your generosity. Bless farmers, migrant farm workers, orchard keepers, ranchers, and all who tend the abundance of the land. Protect food and water sources from destruction that all can eat and drink and be satisfied. God of grace, hear our prayer. By your spirit, grant wisdom, knowledge, and discernment to those who hold leadership positions at any level. Direct policymakers toward compassionate decisions that build up safe and just communities. Lead all authorities in seeking and serving the common good. God of grace, hear our prayer. As Jesus provided generously in a moment of need, provide generous gifts of healing for those in need this day. Provide abundantly for all who are hungry or thirsty, all seeking shelter, and all who seek peace. God of grace, hear our prayer. You see us for who we are and you delight in us. Embrace those struggling with self-worth, wrestling with self-identity, or facing significant life transition. Remind us that nothing can separate us from your love. God of grace, hear our prayer. You see us and bless us through the spiritual gifts of saints who have gone before us. We give thanks today for the life of Martin Luther King Jr. and all who have modeled the way of courageous faith. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promise, O oh God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior, Amen. Let us now pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and evermore. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.